What's up, Smart Homers? My name's Aaron. This spring, I've been working on an automated flower bed watering system. This is because I'm either forgetting to water my flowers and they end up dead, or I go on vacation and I'm not able to. I decided to automate the watering process of my flower bed so that I wouldn't have to worry about this anymore. Press start. The system I built is pretty simple. It uses Home Assistant as the brains of the operation and has two main parts, the watering system and the rainfall and moisture measurement system. Based on the data from the rain sensor and the moisture sensor, I can determine if enough rain has come down in the past few days to keep the flowers happy. If there hasn't been enough rain, the watering system is going to turn on for a specified amount of time and then turn off. Before we continue, I want to quick tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who wants to add to their library of skills. If you have a specific skill that you're trying to learn, Skillshare is the perfect place to start. There are all sorts of classes including coding courses and classes about basic programming languages like YAML. I first got interested in Skillshare when I saw that one of my favorite tech creators, Marquez Brownlee, created a class called YouTube Success Script shoot and edit with MKBHD. Every single video of his is a work of art and I really wanted to up my game by adding some of these skills. Ultimately, this should make my experience with creating videos more enjoyable and your experience viewing them better too. There's a link down in the description and the first thousand people to click it will get a one month premium Skillshare membership. Now back to the video. First, let's take a look at hardware and equipment. For the watering system, I chose an irrigation kit that I found on Amazon that comes with a one half inch supply hose with an adapter for standard outdoor faucets in the US. And it also comes with a quarter inch distribution tubing that can be used to bring the water from that supply line to the different dispensing locations. For the actual dispensing of water, it came with a few different sprinkler nozzle types and I chose the blue ones that have a fine mist spray that covers a pretty large area. I cover the tubing in the flower bed with mulch so you don't see it and you really only see the sprinkler heads popping up above the ground. The hose is connected to an outdoor faucet on the side of my house which is left always on during the summer. Inside my garage, the supply to that faucet is controlled by a quarter turn ball valve. Rather than install an inline smart water valve, I used a Zoo's ZAC36 Titan water valve actuator which is a super cool Z-Wave device that can be mounted on top of a quarter turn valve and will rotate the handle to the on and off positions. As a side note, I am aware that quarter turn valves do have a certain number of cycles to failure, so I'll be keeping an eye on this one with a leak sensor. For the rain measurement system, I'm using an EcoWit WH40 rain gauge. This device is a self-emptying rain gauge that can be mounted on a pole or flat surface. However it's mounted, it needs to be level for accurate rainfall measurement, so a bubble level is built into it to help you position it properly. The device has a main body that's all white with a round black funnel shaped part that's screwed onto the top. There's a spring style filter that's installed into this dish to help prevent any clogs. This device takes a single AA battery. Inside you can see a little spoon shaped part. This spoon gets filled with rainwater and then it tips contacting a sensor and letting the device know that a certain amount of rain equivalent to the volume of that spoon has fallen. The water empties out of the spoon and then the spoon is filled again. This device measures total rainfall over time and broadcasts this information at 915 MHz. It's meant to be paired with the EcoWet Wi-Fi gateway and then there's an app you can use to read the data, but there is a way to get it directly into Home Assistant which I'll show later. For detecting soil moisture, I'm using a WH51 soil moisture sensor by EcoWet, which is an IP66 rated waterproof device that can be stuck directly into the ground to determine the humidity or moisture of the soil. It takes a single AA battery, just like the previous device, and once installed, you can tell that it's broadcasting its data by the LED that flashes on it. This device also broadcasts its data at 915 MHz about once every 70 seconds. To ensure that it's waterproof, a silicone cap is provided to slip over the battery cover. Another device that I had planned to use when I started this project is the Xiaomi Mi Flora 
moisture sensor. It's a Bluetooth low energy device that you can set up to work with Home Assistant using the passive BLE monitor integration from the community store. The one I purchased is actually rebranded and flashed with Tuya software so that it can work with the Tuya Smart Life mobile app, but as I said, it can work directly with Home Assistant via BLE. The advantage to this one over the one that I chose is that it actually reports both illuminance and temperature, two key factors for plant health. It did have a gasket underneath the battery cover around the battery, but it didn't have any IP rating that I'm aware of, so I'm not sure I would consider it an outdoor sensor. The main issue I had with this one was the signal range because Bluetooth Low Energy doesn't have the greatest range and I don't have any other means of extending my range. So to get the data from these EcoWit devices into Home Assistant, we need a receiver and some way to translate that data and get it into Home Assistant. To pick it up, I used a Nualec Mini USB RTL SDR, which is a very cheap USB dongle that can be used as a computer-based radio scanner to receive live radio signals in your area. Depending on the different models of these radios, they can receive signals from 500 kilohertz to 1.7 gigahertz. It can be plugged directly into the USB port on your home assistant hardware and should easily be able to pick up the data from the rain gauge and moisture sensor from 100 meters away. To translate the data and publish it as an MQTT topic, I'm using a home assistant add-on called SDR to Home Assistant by Jeff at Slacker Labs. The add-on supports many different devices, so on the configuration page, you're gonna to need to specify the protocol and the frequency for the rain gauge and moisture sensor. Once you've done that, the devices should show up fairly quickly in the MQTT integration in Home Assistant. So now let me show you what all these devices actually show up like in Home Assistant. The Zoo's water valve actuator shows up with a switch entity for the opening and closing of the valve, some temperature entities, a water leak sensor, and a valve operation status entity. The leak alarm will only work if you use the supplied leak sensor that comes with this device, which I'm not using. The rain gauge shows up with total rainfall, last seen noise, signal to noise ratio, and RSSI entities. Strangely, it doesn't show up with a battery entity. The total rainfall entity kind of acts like a utility meter, constantly increasing as more rainfall is detected. If you want to know daily, weekly, and monthly rainfall amounts, you can do so with helpers in Home Assistant. I created a few utility meter helpers that do this as I'm showing here for the daily rainfall entity. In the helpers list, choose create helper, then give it a name. Choose the input sensor and then set the reset cycle to daily, weekly, etc. based on what rainfall time period that you want. Click submit and then repeat this for any other time periods that you want to see rainfall for. The moisture sensor shows up with a humidity or moisture entity as well as battery, last seen, noise, signal to noise ratio, and RSSI entities. The humidity entity shows the current soil moisture level as you'd expect, but unfortunately the battery entity doesn't seem to give you the actual battery level and only reports 1% all the time. I'm not sure if this is a faulty unit, so I'm gonna pick up another one at some point and compare to see what's going on there. All right, now it's time to automate. With these new helpers, as well as the soil moisture information, I then created a simple automation to tell when the sprinkler should come on. First, I decided to start the sprinkler only in the mornings at 8 a.m. I made this conditional only happening if there had been less than a quarter inch of rain each of the last two days and if the soil moisture was below 30%. Based on my research, for flowers, soil moisture shouldn't be above 40% or below 20%. However, these values for soil moisture and for rainfall amounts should really only be starting points and you need to fine tune them as you figure out what works best for your flowers in your flower bed. If these conditions all passed in my automation, then the sprinkler would go ahead and turn on for 30 minutes. Anyway, that's pretty much it. It's a fairly simple automation as I mentioned at the beginning, but it sure beats having to haul out that hose every time you see the plants need some water, and it sure beats forgetting they need water and your flowers dying. In the future, I may add air temperature, and I'm also thinking about putting multiple moisture sensors in different spots in that flower bed, and then averaging those moistures to determine when the flowers need water. I really appreciate you guys watching, and if you have any questions about this setup or have any suggestions for how I can improve it, feel free to drop a comment. If you guys wanna see more project type content like this, please let me know and don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see more. Anyway, thanks for watching, see ya.